excited for you guys to see these videos that we're working on here at Purina. I mean, the setup is awesome. The birds are so happy. They are. Oh. And Faith yeah. wants you to show the, the anatomy of the chicken. Yeah. Oh. So Julie had a good question before oh. we yeah. before we started. So, what was your question? Well, when here? we were just shooting outside, Dr. Biggs was talking about the gizzard. And I'm thinking, oh, well, we always refer to that as the crop back at home. No, but, no. Nope different but organ. it's but it's different and I didn't know that yeah. I thought it and but so I'm, I'm seeing here's the crop up right. here and when the chickens are at the end of the day that crop is right. is filled up and you can usually see kind of that bigger side of the chest but the gizzard is actually down in here right. so I, I failed her I failed her I as failed a chicken it. chick <laughs> I'm uh, sorry well we can educate her here oh yeah. let's go That's ahead. so all right so you, chickens don't have teeth Right. So, and then chickens are also a prey animal, so they need to eat fast and be able to get away. So that's why they have a crop. So okay. they don't waste time chewing their feet. Food goes they down. swallow it here. They can fill up their crop. They can store it here so okay. that they can be, and slowly it'll get released in here so they can so gorge is, themselves here. So that's just like a holding area. There is there any right. grinding that goes no, on No, there's in no the crop? grinding here. There's okay. very little digestion that goes on here. So it's really just kind of a storage thing. It and mixes then, with water. There's a little bit little, of digestive You get a little bit enzymes. of enzymes. Yeah, and there's some bacteria that hangs out in here, some okay. lactic acid bacteria that's good for the bird and does okay. some stuff here as well. But, for but the, the most grinding part, there's, action goes on. Right. All of, all of the, the fun gizzard. stuff really <laughs> happens when you get past the crop. Oh, the good stuff. Right. Science and grinding in the gizzard are yeah, all fun to Dr. Big. I love the colors that right. we have going on here too. By the way, is this, is this uh, you know scientific? Is this what it looks like? It's not too, it's not too far off. They're a really little browner. Arts, there's there's a little artistic. Oh, Faith wants here. is the crop the equivalent of a stomach? No. So the crop is really just the storage. All right. So then you move from the crop now here. This is actually the proventricular, pro pro ventriculus. which is would be the equivalent of a stomach in humans, but. In birds, it doesn't stay that long in there, so it really, the food stores here, passes through here, and then ends up in the gizzard now. So the gizzard this, is a muscle, right? The gizzard it's is a, a muscle, muscle, and this is really the, the engine of the digestive tract. So the gizzard's role is to grind all that, it's the teeth of the chicken, so mm -hmm. it grinds all that stuff down, um, and when it gets to a certain particle size, then it can pass into the small intestine, and here's where all the magic happens. You, know, you get all your digestion, your absorption, the nutrients get spread out throughout the animal and go to muscle and eggs and everything else that the chicken needs to, you know, stay alive. So that's so, Darlene wants to know where the shell is formed. Ah, all right. Wait, I just wanted to um, we'll yeah. get to Darlene's question in a second, and I wanted to make sure that we mentioned that if you're feeding your birds a complete chicken feed, whether it's starter feed, starter grower, layer feed, and any particle size, they don't need grit to right. help digest those particles because they digest with, they dissolve right. in water. If we take a piece of chicken feed, a pellet, right. and put it in a glass of water, it's yeah. going to dissolve. So, but if they eat anything, any sort of treats, any, anything fibrous, like yeah. grass or whatever, right. something from the garden. Okay, garden okay. fairy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to need some it, it to can help. help. It can help, but really if they're eating feed, uh, that feed itself is going to provide enough friction in there to break down that stuff. So really it's if they're eating a lot of large particle stuff, so if they're eating whole seeds, then whole mice maybe? Or whole snakes. mice, right. Snakes, worms, yeah. Yeah, maybe. But the gizzard is really great. So the bigger the particle size is, the gizzard works that much harder and so the gizzard actually grows in size. Oh. And so it'll get stronger and it'll be able to digest break wow. that stuff down it's even like more. Chicken CrossFit. Right. So <laughs> cool. Who so knew? so any grit is really you don't need it. And if the birds are out foraging themselves they're going to pick up some rocks and gravel on their own, so there's mm -hmm. really no need to kind of supplement them with grit, because grit is really just gravel. Right, so it's an insoluble, right. it it's, can be sand, it can be gravel, yeah, it can it's be non nutritive. It, there's no nutritive benefit to the bird, so it And just, it'll just pass through, pass through in their yeah. poop, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So when, when they eat their oyster shells, whether the oyster shells are in the chicken feed, or whether the oyster shells are um, in a separate hopper, right. the oyster shell is going to going to follow the same track and it's going to stay in the gizzard it will be right. used as grit right right <laughs> then where does the where does the shell all come? right so then the shell is going to go the shell actually gets made over here so this is the reproductive track of the chicken so this is the shell gland it's down here and that's where the shell gets made so we start out here with uh, the ovary these are all of the yolks so at all different stages at all different stages so you're going to see they're usually about nine yolks at a time that are large and then when they're kind of before they've developed into this 
yellow thing, there'll be small little white follicles and as they grow. So a baby chick hatches with all the ova that right. she's going to have for in her entire lifetime. Right. And if she laid an egg every single day of her life and lived for 25 years, she could never use them all up. Right, it's it's something, it's the crazy, there's like three or 4,000 follicles is what she starts out with. And so they all kind of reside on her um, backbone. And then as they get, as did they go know? out, yeah, they kind of move from there and onto the, the ovary and then they start their development. But so they develop a little bit at a time and right. a little bit at a time and how right. many do you say, six or seven? Nine. Or nine? What? What'd you say, how many are, are um, near uh, maturation? Oh, nine. Nine, yeah, nine at a time. I was paying time. attention. <laughs> Somebody was. <laughs> so, all right, so then. That's why I have a garden right. fairy. So we then, share a brain. Yeah, so then the, fall, that, the yolk will get released. It'll spend a few minutes in here and get caught by this part of the reproductive tract and then as it makes and, it and yeah. if there's been a rooster in the flock and he has made it with right. her this is where that's it will be fertilized this right. is the point this that's is the infundibulum yep Ooh. Yes. that's a fancy yeah. <laughs> that's a jeopardy word for you yeah. so so if it's going to be fertilized at all it'll happen right there, right there. in yep. fi like a 15 minute window right, right? yep so it passes through here and then as it makes its way down through the rest of this part the oviduct right so, yeah the oviduct yeah that's where the the white is added, so all of the the white parts get added here, and so when it gets down here to the shell line, it's got all of the white and all the um, the yolk is all ready to go, and then we put the shell gland on, or not the shell gland, we put the shell membrane on, mm -hmm. and then finally the shell gets added. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, and it's going to spend probably about 18 hours in that shell gland, and that's where all of the shell gets put on. And, and, and she's doing this when, like she's most doing, of the time the shell is being made, she's in the evenings and late at night. So while she's sleeping, sleeping. most of that, that's when most of that egg is going on. Uh, and then when it comes time to lay the egg. Wait, hold on. Oh. Yeah, 18 hours just for the shell part. Right. So how long from when the yolk goes into the catcher's mitt before the egg is actually coming out so, the other end? So it takes about 25 hours for an egg to get from here to, and the last thing it gets put on the egg before it comes out is the cuticle. Or the bloom, it's mm -hmm. kind of the, the, bloom. I call the, bloom, it the bloom, yeah, yeah. or the cuticle. It's, of course, it kind of has a couple character. different names, <laughs> right? And so that's kind of the last bit of protection it gets. And also interesting, that's where the majority of the color yeah. comes from when mm -hmm. the birds are putting color on it. Um, that's where the majority of the color gets added, uh, especially for brown eggs. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know, if you take that and kind of right as it comes out, you start rubbing that off, the egg is going to get lighter yeah. color because mm -hmm. that's where most of the color is. But that's that bloom or cuticle is there to kind of protect the shell from uh, bacteria getting in.